We're looking at a worksheet called Partial 3. And this is exactly what you saw on your screen at the end of the previous movie. Now, in that previous movie, we altered the code that allows us to copy-paste information one by one. We recorded that action in the previous movie. Let's take a look at the code, first of all. Alt F11, we'll get us there quickly. In the previous movie, we introduced the idea of using a do loop here. We also considered the possibility of a for loop. But this construction here, do until, is empty, is likely to work. But we're not sure yet. And when you're setting up a macro that's going to work with lots of data, you want to be a little bit careful about saying, well, looks good, I'll just run it through the data. What if we've got some oddities in the data? Or what if there's something in the code here that we overlooked? Sometimes maybe we just haven't given this enough thought. Let's make sure that it's going to work through the data. Let's go to split screen, upper right-hand corner. Let's make this be roughly half of our screen. And then as we click in the worksheet, the same kind of readjustment there as well, too. And in order to test this macro and see the data a little bit better, let's collapse the ribbon menu system. We can either press Control-1 or double-click the currently active tab. In this case, it's on my screen, Developer, just double-click it. And then, before testing this, let's get rid of the data that's here. Press Delete. Now, we want to be able to move through the data here until the active cell is empty. Now, it might not be clear, for example, is it one empty row that we need to see, or is it six? Because every time we move back and forth here, we've got six cells highlighted. So let's say we go down to about row 30 here. This is where we start a new name, row 31 here. I'm going to right-click and insert. Now, if we run our macro right now and highlight this data and do a paste, that's, that'll be one of the actions that we take. When we then move down to the next cells down here and highlight six, is the cell going to read that as empty or not? Well, if you're not sure, put in a few empty rows. And so all we're doing here, I'm going to right-click and insert. And if I want to repeat that, I'll press F4 a few times. We've got some empty rows here. So we're simulating the idea that this is the complete size of the list. So let's click in the VBA screen up above. You can click anywhere within the code itself. Let's go to the Debug menu and choose Step Into. Notice that its keystroke shortcut is F8. Now, as we keep an eye on the worksheet here, we're going to move through the code. I'll press F8. We're about to see the active cell jump to cell B1. And there it has occurred. And now we're going to be highlighting six cells downward. Remember, that line means from the location of the active cell, highlight six cells in the same layout style as if you were highlighting A1 to A6. And we see that happen. Now, is the active cell empty? No, it's not. Let's copy. We're about to copy. And you'll see the indicator that we've copied. We're going to move to the right two cells, right there. And now we're going to use Paste Special and Transpose. The data we copied is going to be transposed. We're moving columnar data into a row. Now we're going to move down six rows and over to the left two columns and select six more cells. And we see that happening, although we're not seeing it completely on the screen there. This line here will simply remove from the previous data the so-called marching ants or marquee lines that we see around cells when we copy them. So I'll press F8. We go to Loop. That means go back up top. Let's check to see if the active cell is empty. It's not. Let's copy the data. Once again, we're going to move over to the right two cells. And then, as before, transpose, paste, special. Down six rows, we're going to highlight the next data. And down to loop, back up top, we'll check the active cell. And I'll start pressing F8 a bit more rapidly here. We're doing the same kind of thing. This appears to be working, but we want to make sure when we come to an empty cell, that this gets recognized. So right now, we've moved down six rows. You can see in the worksheet, as soon as we come to loop here, we see these cells being highlighted. Back up top, is the active cell empty? Yes, it is. And now, as we press F8, look what happens. We jump to there and F8 to complete the action. So this appears to be working for the information we've got here. Are we ready to try this through the entire set of data? Let's say that we are. So in the data itself, let's get rid of the empty rows right here. Right click and delete. The data is all together. Let's remove the data that we've copied. Simply press delete there. And let's try this all the way through the data. 
Now, even here, you might want to consider sometimes starting slowly, keeping an eye on what's happening. At other times in different situations, perhaps similar, you might want to start this with F8. In other words, debug, step into F8, maybe go through an iteration or two. If it's looking good, but you don't want to do this 2400 rows, you're saying it looks good. I tested out the is empty capability. It seemed to work. At some point here, you can just press F5. If you didn't know that, you could go to the run menu here, continue with F5. This is going to go all the way through the data, and hopefully, it won't be watching the screen. Let's see what happens 2400 rows later. This will take a few seconds, but not too long. And we're watching the screen, the row numbers down the left hand side. We're into the thousands already. Remember, it's about 2400 rows. And there we are. And we're down to row 2401. But let's look at the data off to the right. This appears to be working. This is the major portion of the macro. We're not finished, of course. We do want to bring that data together. It's sitting there six rows apart. Obviously, that's not the final stage. But we've tested this macro. We went through a few iterations here looking at how this handles information. We tested out the idea that we want to know when we found an empty cell. And then we tested it with all the data. And it's a highly recommended approach. You're never always sure that your code is correct. Test it out on a few cells. And then after that, test it on the entire set of data. A bit later, we'll also show you a technique that hides all that copy-paste activity. Sometimes that gets a little bit boring to watch with larger amounts of data. And so the emphasis in this movie has been on testing a macro on just a few sets of cells. It seemed to have worked properly. And then we tried on the entire set of data. We're not finished with this macro, but the major portion of it, the idea of restructuring the data, has been done and we tested it properly.